This video is part one of three for unit four, systems. Before moving on, take a few minutes to look through the vocabulary for this unit. Before starting the packet, Make sure that you've completed all three parts of the pre-assessment for Unit 4. The topics for 3B, 3C, which is solving systems of equations, uh, 3A, 3E, which is word problems with systems, and then 3D, 3F, 3G, test points and inequalities. After you've completed those three parts of the pre-assessments, record what level you are for each, and then come up with some specific goals for this unit. What do you want to achieve? Remember, to become proficient in something, the average student needs to spend two to three hours for every hour in class working on course material. That means nine to 14 hours per week for this class outside of class. So let's look at 3B and 3C. Before we look at the exercise problems, the practice problems, let's go to our notes booklet. Systems and matrices harm. So you should have gotten one of these packets. It would be stapled right here. What you want to do is unstaple it and fold it in half where that such that each of the pages will be in order. So this will be on the front and then you'll have your table of contents, page one and page two, and so on. Go ahead and do that if you haven't already, and then we'll continue. For this first video, for solving systems of equations, we'll look at pages 1 through 13 of the notes booklet. For the next video, we'll look at page 14. And then for the last video, we'll look at pages 17 and 18. Let's look at page one, substitution. Substitution is plugging in number or expression for a variable to help solve it. Example one is just evaluating. When y equals five, we're gonna find what x is. So instead of y in the second equation, We will substitute 5 for y, so it be 9 times 5 equals 45, so that's what x equals. So your coordinate point would be 45 comma 5, and that would be your answer, your, point solu your solution point to the system. Example two, we're going to set them equal to each other. So it'd be 3x minus 7 equals 2x plus 1. Solve for x. Subtract 2x from each side. And then we have x minus 7 equals 1. Add 7 to each side. Then we get x equals 8. To find y, we'll just substitute 8 wherever we see an x. Uh, we could do equation 1 or equation 2. We'll go ahead and do equation 2. It looks a little bit easier. So 2 times 8 plus 1. That's 16 plus 1. That's 17. So your answer would be 8, 17. That would be your solution point. We are using substitution to solve a system of equations. 
you will follow these steps. 1. Solve an equation for a variable. According to example 1, the variable is already solved. Example 2, the variable is also solved already. 2. Sub that equation into the other. So wherever we see what we solve for up here, we'll plug that into the second equation. 3. Solve new equation. And then 4. Back sub to find your point. So like for example 2, we found that x equals 8. Plug in 8 wherever you see an x into the original equation to find y. Let's look at example 3. We have 2x minus 3y equals negative 11, and y equals 4x minus 3. Let's call this one equation 1, and this one equation 2. So wherever we see a y in the first equation, we will substitute this expression 4x minus 3 instead, and solve for x. So that will look like this, 2x minus 3 parentheses, your sub expression 4x minus 3 equals negative 11. Distribute and combine like terms. We have 2x minus 12x plus 9 equals negative 11. Combine like terms. Negative 10x plus 9 equals negative 11. From there, we'll solve for x, subtract 9 each side, and then we get negative 10x equals negative 20. Divide each side by negative 10. That's 1x equals 2. You'll back sub to find your point. So we'll use equation 2 again, this y is already by itself y equals 4 times 2 minus 3. Um, 8 minus 3 is 5. So that's y. So your solution point is 2 comma 5. Let's look at another example. Example 4. You'll solve the first equation for x first, or you could solve for y. I would solve for x here, though, since it looks like it's the easiest to get by itself. So go ahead and pause the video, see if you could work this one out. So you should have written this out, and we'll, ex we'll put the expression negative 2y plus 1 instead of the parentheses where the x used to go. Distribute it by like terms. We get negative 6y plus 3 plus 4y equals negative 1. Combine like terms, they get negative 2y plus 3 equals negative 1. Subtract 3 each side. Negative 2y equals negative 4. Divide each side by negative 2. So we get 1y equals 2. Plug in 2 back into the y value to solve for x. We'll just evaluate for x in this case. So we have x equals negative 2 times 2 plus 1. x equals negative 4 plus 1. x equals negative 3. So your solution point is negative 3 comma 2. Now let's look at some other ones, some special cases. 
We have infinite solutions and no solution. So let's look at this uh, example 5. We'll call the first equation equation 1, second equation equation 2. So wherever we see an x in the first equation, we'll substitute the expression negative 3y plus 5 instead. Distribute and combine like terms. So negative 6y plus 10 plus 6y equals 10. Combine like terms, you get 10 equals 10 because the 6y's would cancel out here. 10 equals 10, we can subtract 10 from each side. We get 0 equals 0. Now 0 equals 0 is always true. So it's all real numbers, infinite solutions. Now let's look at example 6 with no solution. Wherever we see a y in the first equation, we'll substitute the expression negative 2x plus 1 instead. So go ahead and substitute that in and write it out. Distribute and combine like terms. So have 4x minus 4x plus 2 equals 7. Those cancel. So you have 2 equals 7. That's never going to be true. 2 is never equal to 7, so that's always false, no matter what x is. So that'd be no solution. Okay, the next page is solving a three variable system by substitution. Step one, solve one equation for one of its variables. Step two, substitute the expression from step one and the other two equations to linear systems of two variables. Step three, solve the new linear system for both of its variables. And step four, substitute the values found in step three into one of the original equations to solve for the remaining variable. So we'll solve this one using substitution. Uh, let's solve for Let's solve for x here. So we have, we'll say that x equals negative y. So wherever we see an x in the second equation, we will put negative y instead. So we have negative, negative y plus y minus z equals negative 5. And then we'll do the same thing in equation 3. Wherever we see an x, we'll substitute with a negative y. Now from here, we want to either solve for z or for y. Let's go ahead and simplify these and figure out which one looks easier to solve for. So we have y plus y minus z equals negative 5. We could call that equation 4. And then y plus y is 2y. So we go ahead and replace that. So that would be equation 4. The equation 5 would be this equation. Uh, negative 2y plus negative 3y is negative 5y. Okay, now we will solve for either y or z. Looks like z would be easier to solve here. So on this equation right here, 2y plus 5 equals z. You would move, you'd bring the negative 5 to the other side, so it would be a positive 5 bring the negative z to the other side to get positive z. 
Wherever we see z at equation 5, we'll substitute the expression 2y plus 5 instead. So then we get negative 5y plus 7 parentheses 2y plus 5 equals 26. Distribute and combine like terms of negative 5y plus 14y plus 35 equals 26. Okay, combine like terms, you get 9y plus 35 equals 26. Subtract 35 from each side. So then we get negative 9 equals 9y. Divide each side by 9, you get 1y equals negative 1. So that's the y value. We're going to plug in negative 1 wherever we see a y into one of these two equations, either e4 or e5. Uh, let's plug it into e4. So we have 2 times negative 1 minus z equals negative 5. We're going to solve for z. Negative 2 minus z equals negative 5. Add 2 to each side. Negative z equals negative 3. Divide by negative 1. Get 1z equals 3. Now, wherever we see a z and a y, we'll substitute those for the two found values to solve for x. And we'll plug it back into one of these originals. Let's plug it into the changed equation 1 since x is already by itself. So we'll have x equals negative y, which is negative 1. x equals 1. So your solution point is 1, comma, negative 1, comma, 3. It's very easy to make small mistakes on these, so be careful. You can also check your work by plugging them back into the equations. All three equations should be true for it to be the actual solution. So this is one method for solving systems of equations by hand. Most commonly, only systems of two equations will show up for you to do by hand. Other than that, you could use a calculator most likely. Let's look at the next page. Oh, but first let's go ahead and look at example 8. It's a nonlinear system. So we already have y by itself in equation 2. So wherever we see a y in the first equation, we'll substitute the expression x plus 4. So then we get x squared plus parentheses x plus 4 times x plus 4 equals 8. We repeat this twice because it has a squared right here. That means the factor is repeated twice. And then we can use box or foil to find the product of those two binomials. Here's the box method. So x times x is x squared. x times 4 is plus 4x. x times 4 is plus 4x. And then 4 times 4 is a plus 16. Combine the like terms. 4x plus 4x is 8x. So then we have x squared plus x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 8. Let's subtract the 8 to the other side, so then we'll have 0 on the right side. Combine these two, you get 2x squared. Notice that we can factor out of 2 here because they're all even. Divide each side by 2. 
So there we have x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 0. From there we can factor it. So we have, we're finding a number that, two numbers that multiply to give you 4, and they add to give you 4. It would be 2 and 2. So your factored form would be x plus 2 times x plus 2 equals 0. Your roots would be x equals negative 2. To find the y value, you just substitute negative 2 back in here to evaluate for y. So that would be y equals negative 2 plus 4, which equals 2. So our solution point would be negative 2 comma 2. For systems with a quadratic or a circle or something of that sort, you could possibly have two solutions, not just one. The easiest way to solve these ones will be by graphing. And for right now, that is all you'll be expected to do if you are from the regular Algebra 2 class. Let's look at a different method. So we have substitution and then we also have elimination. Elimination is multiplying or dividing equations by numbers and then adding the equations together to eliminate a variable to help solve. Here's our steps for doing this. First, you will have it in standard form. Standard form is ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are integers. You could also have a z right here or any other un amount of terms that you want. Two, additive inverses. So basically, what if you add the two together, the two equations together, you would get zero y in this case. Step three, add them. So like, for example, one, we just add these two equations together to get 9x plus 0y equals 9. And then you would solve, and then whatever you get for x, you would just back sub that to find your other variable. So divide by 9, you get 1x equals 1. So we're going to plug this in wherever we see and x into one of these two equations to solve for y. Uh, let's plug it back into equation 1. So we have 3 plus something equals 5. That something would be 2. Uh, to find that, 5 minus 3 is 2. So your solution point would be 1 comma 2. Let's look at this example. Example 2, multiply one row. So, we'll say this was equation 1, this was equation 2. If we want to get rid of y, the additive inverse of negative 2 would be a positive 2. To show that, we'll multiply the first equation by 2 and the second equation just by 1. So. We're not really multiplying by anything new. So we'll rewrite that. So it'd be 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times 1y is 2y. And then 2 times negative 11 is negative 22. And then you'll rewrite equation 2. 6x minus 2y equals negative 2. Add the rows together, the equations. You get 12x plus 0y equals negative 24. Divide each side by 12. You get 1x equals negative 2. We'll back sub this negative 2 back in for the x to find y. So we'll have 3 parentheses negative 2 plus y equals negative 11. Again, it doesn't matter if you put it into equation 1 or equation 2. 
you'll still get the same Y. Add 6 to each side. Y equals negative 5. So your solution point would be negative 2 comma negative 5. If we look at the next example, we're going to multiply two rows. So if we want to get rid of x, for example, we would multiply the first equation by 2 and the second equation by negative 3. Because then we would get 6x up here and negative 6x in the second equation, and those would cancel. When we multiply an equation, we multiply all the terms. So there's three terms for each of these. Don't just multiply the left side, but multiply both sides. So that would look like this. 2e1 minus 3e2. If we rewrite that, it would look like this. 6x plus 14y equals 22. And then negative 6x minus 15y equals negative 21. Add them together, we get 0x minus 1y equals 1. Divide each side by negative 1. We get 1y equals negative 1. And then you'll back sub this to find x. So let's write that in. Uh, let's use the first equation. So 3x plus 7 times negative 1 equals 11. 3x minus 7 equals 11. Add 7 to each side. You get 3x equals 18. Divide each side by 3. You get 1x equals 6. So your solution point would be 6 comma negative 1. Let's look at examples 4 and 5. Our infinite solutions are no solutions. So if we just combine these two rows together, we already get stuff that cancels out. 0x plus 0y equals 0. 0 equals 0, always true. Infinite solutions. And then example 5, no solution. If we add the two equations together, we get 0x plus 0y equals 6. 0 is never equal to 6, no matter what those variables are. So that's no solution. Okay, let's look at solving a three-variable system by Gaussian elimination. Step 1, eliminate one variable to obtain a linear system of two variables. Step 2, solve the new linear system for both of its variables. Step 3, substitute the values found in Step 2 into one of the original equations and solve for the remaining variable. Row echelon form is the form ax plus by plus cz equals d for every equation system of equations properties. So you can do these things. You can interchange two equations, multiply one of the equations by a non-zero constant, or add a multiple of one of the equations to another equation to replace the latter equation. So let's look at this example. Let's call the first one equation 1 second one e2, and the third one e3. So what you want to do is get rid of one of the variables. So we're going to choose some pathways right here. So e1 and e2, e1 and e3, e2 and e3. So you're going to choose two of those combinations. And then you're going to choose to either get rid of x first, y first or z first and then you'll choose the next thing so let's just say that we'll do e1 and e2 
and then E1 and E3. So we didn't have to do this one. And let's just say that we get rid of Y first. So we'll call that red one. Okay, the next thing we'll get rid of, let's say that we get rid of uh, Z. So Z will be second. So let's do that pathway right there. Again, you could choose different things. You could have chosen this instead. You could have chosen to get rid of X or Z first. Doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. So to get rid of Y, use the equation one equation 2, you just add the two equations together. It's E1 plus E2. So let's write those out. X minus Y plus 3Z equals 8. 3X plus Y minus 2Z equals negative 2. Add the two equations together, you get 4X plus 0Y plus 1Z equals 6. And we'll call this equation E4. E4 is found by using one of the three combinations. Now let's find E5 by using equations 1 and equations 3. Note that we still have to get rid of the same variable that we chose to get rid of first. So, to get rid of y for E1 and E3, we'll multiply the first equation by 4. So we'll say 4e1 plus e3 would equal e5. So we write that out like this. So multiply each term by negative 4, or by 4. 4 times 1x is just 4x. 4 times negative y is negative 4y. 4 times 3z is plus 12z. 4 times 8 is 32. And then we'll write the second, or the third equation here. 2x plus 4y plus 1z equals 0. Add the two equations together. We get 6x plus 0y plus 13z equals 32. And we'll call this one e5. So, for right here, we'll use E4 and E5 to get rid of Z. So, we have 13Z and we have Z. We multiply this fourth equation by negative 13 and the fifth equation by just 1. So, we have negative 13 E4 plus E5 equals E6. E6 will have only one variable so that we can solve it. So let's multiply each term in E4 by negative 13. Negative 13 times 4x is negative 52x. Negative 13 times 1z would be negative 13z. And then negative 13 times 6 would be negative 78. And then we'll copy down the second equation, equation 5. 6x plus 13z equals 32. Combine the two equations together. That's 0z equals negative 46. Divide each side by negative 46. You get 1x equals 1. So we'll back sub this into either equation 4 or equation 5 to get z. Looks like e4 is a lot easier, so we'll plug it in there. So 4 times 1 plus something equals 6. 4 plus 2 would be 6. z equals 2. We'll back sub both of those numbers into one of the original three equations to get y. So 1 and negative, or 1 and 2, let's plug it into 
the second one. So we have 3 times 1, that's 3, plus y minus 4 equals negative 2. Add 4 to each side. You get 3 plus y equals 2. Subtract 3. y equals negative 1. So your solution point is 1, negative 1, and 2. And then we have our nonlinear equations. Looks like we could just add these and the y's will cancel. So if 2x squared equals 32, divide each side by 2. We have 1x squared equals 16. To get rid of the square, we're going to square root each side. The square root of 16 is 4, but we can also do negative 4. Because 4 times 4 is 16, and negative 4 times negative 4 is also 16. So we're going to have two possible answers here. I'll plug these back in to solve for y. So let's just have uh, x equals negative 4 first. So we have negative 4 squared plus y squared equals 16. 16 plus y squared equals 16. In this case, y would have to equal 0. If you did x equals 4, you would get a similar outcome. y would also be 0 there. So your two solutions are negative 4, 0, and 4, 0. And so those would be your two intersections. If you were to graph this, you would see that it crosses, it intersects each other two places.